Keep that girl out of sight. And you and your daughters may get whatever you desire. Someone like that doesn't just vanish. I have to see her again. And God knows I'm not I'm a little bit afraid. <laughs> Sitting across so you should from be. You. So who's the Republican and who's the Democrat? I know. I was thinking oh, we look very political. It's Cinderella. It's it's a very political film. Oh, well, obviously, <laughs> yes, very uh, real, and it is. It's the characters are three dimensional, and I think that's they what are. makes it. That's what makes it um, contemporary because I think every other time, certainly my experience that I've been told or watched the Cinderella story, mm -hmm. even in the Disney animated classic. Mm -hmm you don't really get to know what makes the characters tick. You get swept up by the music or the fact that this beautiful Dress. young girl gets mm -hmm. rescued from the ugliness of her environment <laughs> by a, a handsome prince. Mm -hmm. And there's much more to this. Absolutely. You know, we still know what happens in the end, but the joy is seeing it unfold as if for the first time. Right, with the layers, especially with Lady Tremaine, because in the animated one you kind of see her and she's just evil and has Lucifer and we don't know why. Yeah. But tell me a little bit about getting to kind of unpack why is she so bitter, you know? Well, it did interest me what makes someone evil. Obviously, mm -hmm. she's got an exquisite facade, and it's a hard experience. Mm -hmm. And the fact that she has sort of um, hardened and become bitter through her experience rather than seeing that Cinderella has had a similar experience and finding a connection through right. that. You know, there's a, cho a series of choices that we make in life and you can either grow through your experience or shrink. Or and the, Yeah, mm -hmm. and the stepmother has definitely um, done the latter. What an ugly dress. And she's skinny as a bra. And that stringy hair. You're very nice. Welcome. I'm so happy to meet you. You have such pretty hair. Oh, thank you. You should have it styled. Oh, I'm sure you're right. Uh, would you like a tour of the house? What did she say? She wants to show us around her farmhouse. She's proud of it, I think. Do they keep animals inside? <laughs> How charming. How perfectly charming. Lucifer. Her stepmother-to-be was a woman of keen feeling and refined taste. And she, too, had known grief. But she wore it wonderfully well. How, you're very kind, and I am so, so I, kind. So you really, truly, and generous, and humble, and humble, <laughs> very, very humble. But how did you? Were you channeling like a mean teacher that you had, or was it the the wonderful femme fatale, the costumes? How did you become cruel? Um, incrementally. Interesting. It's a second marriage for her, and I think it's clear from the husband that they sort of need one another. It's right. a, there's a slight sense of convenience. But there was a little moment which I asked Ken if we could extend that, that the stepmother actually heard a conversation between the father and Cinderella um, about how much they love one another mm -hmm. and how much they miss you know, Cinderella's mother, of his course. wife. And I think that that's the, gen that's the genesis mm -hmm. for it. But also, the stepmother is worldly wise. Um, and she knows that Cinderella has a special quality and that's a threat to her girls mm -hmm. and that there's um, purity yes and so I think she she has uh, designs on her from from the get-go mm -hmm. now I don't I don't always love to ask them what are you wearing and all that but the costumes well, are costumes incredible. and they tell me about they're those. a huge they're a huge huge part of the of the character of the landscape mm -hmm. And, um, and when I knew it was Sandy Powell and Dante Ferretti creating the sets and costumes, then you know, done. yeah, exactly, you're completely done. And the, to be in dialogue with Sandy is fantastic. It's, you know, the colour choices, the silhouette and, you know... The silhouette is ridiculous. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> it's and what an entrance she and Ken have, you know, have given Lady Tremaine. You know, Absolutely. the boots, like Spielberg's mm -hmm. jewel coming out of the thing with the cat and the hat and the dress. It's... You know, no acting required. So do you prefer to play the villain? Especially after this role? Is that, are you like, yes, that is me. No. Well, it's... 
I, it's, it was wonderful being part of a fairy tale and a grounded fairy tale. There's a lot of grief in, in the, grief you know, in, in, in the story. You know, there's a lot of um, buoyancy and slapstick and, you know, um, and a lot of romance. But there is a lot of grief, and I think that's what sort of binds all of the characters or separates them in the case of the stepmother. Absolutely. Well, we loved you. I was very afraid. The closed mouth laughing, that's what got me. All right. <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> I tried. I looked ridiculous. Right. You look wonderful and also terrifying. <laughs> Gentlemen, oh. may I present my daughters Anastasia and Rosella? Off you go! <laughs> Smile! <laughs> Come with me. How do you make a career in show business? Join us on the set where we meet groundbreaking Hollywood talents who made bold decisions to pursue their dreams of making entertainment history on screen. The boldness is just like a character trait. You know, you just have to step out there and give it a shot and not be afraid.